Okay, welcome back to another session of gaming news for the gaming that we've been gaming forever. And uh, Tuesday nights, usually. And this episode is the news for uh, 17 January 2017. Hopefully uh, there isn't more gaming tomorrow, but I usually do this on Sunday, but I'm doing it today because the wife's asleep. We last left our heroes, or rather villain, uh, Magneto's team, on Earth 210. Uh, it's about 9 March. And it's really early in the morning, 9 March. And Magneto's team, well, Max, this is Max, not Eric or Magnus, Max Eisenhart, his team is at Nova Roma in Brazil. So they're clear down here in Brazil. Somewhere in the Amazon, Nova Roma, the city, which is where Celine Galeo is. And Celine Galeo is like the immortal from Marvel. But since she's a mutant and all mutants are roughly the same age here in this Earth 210, um, 18 years old, roughly, depending on if they had, if they're first or second born. And, um, Max went down there due to the advice of one of his team's, uh, advice. One of his team members, uh, which is Joel Hastings. So, uh, the Alkalites wait on board. I was still calling them Alkalites. If anybody can think of a better team for Max, Name for Magneto's team. New Mutants. For his villain team. Alkalites says it because this Magneto is not looking at his team to be Alkalites like they were. But this is a Magneto that came from 10.3, which will hopefully divulge more 10.3 adventures as requests for the leave comments below sort of thing. I know, Ray, you've asked for, you made some comments below. So maybe I can comment them in another comment later. All right. So while Max is down in Nova Roma, we don't get to hear what Max is doing. He seems to want to do the recruiting himself and leave his team on board. Joel Hastings and the rest of the Alkalites, uh, which are Forge, Cassie, Cassandra, Xavier, Peter Petrelli, Claire Bennett, and it's really early in the morning, so they're tired, but they're chatting and talking while he gets them. He returns to the ship with Galeo. Oh, by the way, yeah. He returns to the ship with Galeo, um, Celine. And it's not this ancient, immortal woman, but an 18-year-old girl living in a Noma, a Roman society in Brazil. So it's a little bit different. It's more like Amara's character from New Mutants. And she... So she she looks a little concerned. She just got her powers and she realizes, hey, I touch people, I kill them. Drains life force from them. And she probably could do a whole lot of stuff yet to be revealed. And after she gets on board, Max says... And his ship is called Magnus. Magnus, take us to Black World as part of the deal with him and Wanda. Then they go to Black World. Black Earth. Black World. It's Black World. I put it wrong on my form. Um, so they go to Black World and quickly arrive at the asteroid that the other three teams are on. They arrive and quickly leave... Magnus and as they arrive in the docking bay Alex knows about their arrival and shows up so we last left our heroes in Black World they were all getting ready to meet in the Fantasia device to do a various different vacations kind of a team building experiences and I think, uh, yeah, Omega Dawn 
Christopher Lords and Mega Dawn were, were first to go into the Fantasia device. His team is made up of, and I'm going to keep saying this each episode so we get better at remembering. He's got Adriana Tomas, uh, Megan Morse, Z- Zatanna, or Zatanna, Calvin Rankin, Sam Guthrie, Alan Scott, and Big Barda. As they're getting ready to go on a hiking thing up into the Colorado Rockies sort of thing. Or is it not really the Colorado Rockies? No, it's around the Grand Canyon. Anyways, they go as they're getting ready to go. And they're in the ready room of the Fantasia device. Some of their stronger minds sense that Max has arrived. Because Max has uh, Cassandra Xavier on their team. And she's got... You know, mental powers like her brother. And he's actually telling her, you know, hold back your mental powers. Don't reach into the team because they have all these telepaths and they're going to know that we're here. And I really don't want this jumping to conclusions that we're trying to attack. And so they aren't really trying to be villains. And who knows what Max is really trying to do here because he's not going all out on them like he would have. And they, some of them have humans. And he's really discriminates and hates humans, this version of them. Of Max. It feels that they're the end of the universe. They're going to be the end of everything. Mutants are next step in evolution. Blah, blah, blah. All right. So, is that a fascist mentality? Okay. So, Omega Dawn goes ahead and goes into their Fantasia device scenario, which is the first, the first thing that they do is go to some outdoor place like Dick's Sporting Goods or REI and they get all these hiking supplies and, and there's a various um, team building building rapport with each other while they get these supplies. Uh, Sam Gunthrie talking with, uh, since he's a country boy, talking with Calvin Rankin who's a city boy from Jersey about hiking and all this outdoorsy stuff. So they go and grab a lot of that stuff. Alan Scott's like, hey, why don't I just rely on my uh, newfound lantern and uh, does, uh, just kind of making that as a joke. Megan is is more about the spirit of this whole thing. They, as they, they get their supplies, spending a couple hundred dollars, but this this is all a scenario made in the Fantasia device to get them out in the world. And this is only what has been drawn from people's memories and the supply, supplied information from their four ships that have arrived. The Fantasia device can't draw from a real world. So it's got a patchwork a synthetic hollow world. It's not really hollow. It's an altered reality inside this box. It costs a lot of energy. Yeah. Anyways, so then they go, they start on the hike. And I think they put, uh, what, what was it? Sam, Sam, Sam is holding up the back. Uh, Christopher Lord heads out front and they hike up this trail into the Colorado. No, Grand Canyon area. And immediately Zatanna's having a hard time because she's a city girl too. Even though she's from Vegas and kind of a rich girl because her dad's like this big magician. And she's, you know, mage herself, but she's not used to this um, outdoorsy thing. She's not the a different kind of mage. Um, I'm playing her like that city girl. I don't know. I haven't watched Young Justice and a lot of those shows to get that personality. Same with Megan, but I'm trying to react. All right, so as they do that, out in the uh, control room for the Fantasia device is Alex's team with the Argonauts. And they walked over here from the gym. Uh, I think that's where we last left them. And uh, so uh, the Argonauts are made up of Hope, Spalding, Batman, Monet, Charles Xavier, David Aline, Tessa, and Mindy McCready. 
And it was Monet's idea that their little vacation would be someplace tropical, warm, and, and luxurious sort of idea. So she sends them to some islands like uh, French Fiji Islands or French Tahiti, something like that. Some place that she had been in her youth growing up as a rich Mediterranean woman. Uh, but even traveling around the world, but from France. And so they start off on it, uh, but before they go, their, their mentalist, mostly Charles, realizes that, hey, my sister's here. And that sucks because his sister was kind of a bully towards him. I'm taking her personality from, from uh, Cassandra Nova, who was a real bad person and really wanted to, hated Charles and everything and hated the X Men and stuff. So she's kind of, um, like, kind of like a dickhead, jerk. Um, I don't want to use B word because that's anti female, I think. But, um, but yeah, she's she's a real jerk. Um, so Charles is like, oh crap, she's here, and lets Alex know. Alex like, oh man, I'm gonna go down there, you know, beam me up, uh, ops, and then beam me down to the hangars. But she could have walked, but he did that instead. Beam, I'm there. React to me, Magneto. Well, they greet. Magneto's like, hey, I'm, I'm not here to kill everybody. And then he's actually thinking, uh, Alex thinks to himself, is that true? Because the knowing device knows, and it is true. He's not sure to try to hurt. Um, oh, by the way, Max also has his uh, girlfriend, Scarlet Witches and their, their mother's name. Marta Magnet. Ah, crap. So, anyways, but they have her there, and she's Rom- Romani and from Romania. And she's told, and she's currently pregnant with twins who will be someday Pietro and Wanda. And so the and this is Max's uh body got and this before Eric from 10.3 time blended in when he died 25 years ago in our gaming stuff time blended into this Max and this Max is was an 18 year old who had gotten her pregnant anyway so Max is like okay I don't have kids but here she is and she's here with them and his alkalites so Alex sees this and says, okay. And then he teleports to Hope because Hope has still got the Time Lord power, uh, time spot power that Alex has on this world. Anyways, then they go into uh, the ready rooms and into their Fantasia device scenario, being on a rather luxurious um, sailing boat off the coast of Fiji, they do some sailing. Um, Bruce, Batman also, by the way, takes off his cow, finally. And I call him Batman because he's really not Bruce. He pretends to be Bruce, but he doesn't need to be pretend to be Bruce. He's just Batman now. And even without the cow, because they do have Mindy McCready, who's on the other team, and they're kind of concerned if Mindy knows that if he's Bruce, then that might lead to bad things later. Um, Bruce, uh, Batman actually hasn't told the rest of the team other than Hope and David, and David knows everything anyways, that he's Bruce Wayne and Batman are the same. So Charles is starting to figure that out because Charles has paid attention to things like that. And Monet has already called him Bruce because she's a rich chick and she would know Bruce Wayne at first glance. Ah, oh, Bruce Wayne. And she's a telep- telepath, probably... Got off some surface thoughts from Hope and David, whatever. She knows. So people are starting to find out as he's callous <laughs> um, on this sailing boat as they're sailing around together. Um, Hope and David, because of their, uh, well, one, David's power to know all the talents of everybody else around him, knows how to sail a boat, which Batman and I think... Uh, Monet might know some stuff about it. He just knows that knowledge. So he helps um, Batman and Hope, who know how has his pow- who has David's power. They go and they and they're stealing the boat. And uh, 
Alex just tries to stay out of the way uh, and maybe learn a little bit about sailing as they sail the, the boat into a safe harbor, uh, like a lagoon, blue lagoon sort of thing. And they go swimming. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Alex dunks Hope into the water, jumps with Hope into the water. Oh no, he actually jumps into the water and using his time spot power, grabs the Time Lord, the only Time Lord here, Hope, and brings him to her and they crash into the water. He's doing that flirting thing, which is rare to see Alex gaming, but he does and it's cool. And so they do that. Charles and Monet flirt and kiss and make out and stuff. Um, David and Mindy kind of flirt around a little bit too, and which is kind of neat. Uh, what else? Tessa has been still warming up to Batman. So you can start to see these couples that might be formed over the next decades or so here starting to build up if and when they do do that. Like I told you in the other episodes, there's two weeks group and then the two years group. So, uh, oh, and um, Chris Ritz's team, stars uh, made up of Kamala Khan, Clarice Ferguson, Mary Marvel, Wally West, Sam Alexander, and Gwen Stacy. And Spider Gwen Stacy, that is. Um, they they come to consensus that their little vacation is going to be more like, hey, let's hang out at Disney. Because <laughs> they're trying to go off of what memories that are available. And some of them have been to Disney and seen things. And so they're going to go and do this fun thing as young people going to a, an amusement park. And hopefully, and they try to, and they lower the population so that there wasn't that many people to deal with in long lines and stuff. They don't want to spend all this time together in lines. But I think lines are great because it's time to communicate to the people around you and have somewhat. But maybe millennials who are used to just communicating on their phone. Do, 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 do. Oh, I can talk to the person with me. Ah, maybe when your battery runs out. Anyways, I'm just teasing. That's a tease, not like a real condemnation of millennials. Anyways, so they come to that decision. They head to the Fanchidasia device, but yet to do anything with it. Max calls his team together, and then they leave to do some sort of similar adventure team building, as you will. And since um, I'm thinking that maybe I would, I'm going to allow um, that Chris and Alex would play some people on Max's team to keep that adventure going, but that only leaves Forge, who Ray Moore would play Forge really great if he was playing with us. I would love that. Um, and then the other guy is Peter Petrelli, which maybe Chris could play a good Peter Petrelli, I think. would. And uh, so we're thinking about that. I just, uh, oh, and in case you don't know, I've been having the other players play alternate characters to keep the story going instead of me playing a dozen, seven NPCs. It's uh, it's rough. And it, it keeps everybody that is gaming there that day more things to do. So like Alex is also playing Calvin Rakin on Omega Dawn and he's playing Peter Parker. Yeah, Alex and Peter Parker. But so far, it's so good. It's a little different. Um, on Stars. Joel Hastings is playing Wally West on Stars and on Argonauts, he's playing Charles Xavier. And Chris Ritz on the Argonauts is playing David Analine. And on Omegadon, he is playing Sam Guthrie and plays a great Sam Guthrie. And hard to picture my son as a big, tall, white, skinny guy, but... He's doing a great job. And so that was it for um, Black World. Still in day one of Black World. And 
210. So, and then we go to the realm of Clefland with a D, where I'll be gaming with Ray, and, and perhaps this coming Tuesday we'll we'll be back to play more Clefland uh, with everybody because we've been playing Magic over the last couple of weeks, but playing via text or email to Ray on Clefland, we got. Yes, we have Heather and Kyle have arrived back at the castle in Camelot and and Kyle being the scion of the Baron. They go want to go inform him of what they found uh, as they're walking to go in the castle. Now this place is populated with servants and the servants come up to Kyle and Heather and say, hey, your mother, Baron's got this big dinner going on. It's lunch, basically. Wants the whole family to gather. So, and this also is being told to the Baron. And I'm waiting for Ray's response. Let me see what he does. So that's what's going on with that. And uh, then we wind up playing a couple games of Magic the Gathering. Again, like, the, like these guys, the Browns. I've lost again. <laughs> Two more games. Chris won both of these games. I believe he did. Maybe Alex won one and then Chris the other. I think he did. And kicked butt. Uh, but I was able to win. Almost win against my son. But didn't. And that's it for this week. So if you, you like what I'm saying, um, subscribe above. And if you want questions about what I've been going on, that's not comments, Ray. Questions. Comment below. See you next week. Or in a com thing that I might be doing later.